the theory of relativity involves kind of a couple things. First off, it evolved off of special relativity, which could put the framework in a way of saying that we have three spatial dimensions and you can treat time as a fourth dimension, that they're not considered always linear like uh, originally, that time is continuously the same for everyone. So uh, when Einstein developed it, general relativity played off of special relativity in that, in that way somewhat. I think the most profound things of relativity um, that relativity gives us is that um, space and time are interrelated in a way that we don't sort of see in our everyday lives. Normally, um, we think of space and time as being two totally separate entities. Um, you can move around freely through space. Um, you can't move freely through time. It seems that time just sort of flows on um, regardless of what we do. Um, and really what, what relativity brings, uh, what relativity tells you is that um, that's basically totally wrong. The main thing general relativity did on there though was it incorporated gravity. It gave the first kind of explanation for why gravity is the way it is through kind of a curvature of space-time is what they consider it as a kind of an explanation for gravity. General relativity kind of explains stuff at a very large scale, so galaxies and stuff, whereas quantum mechanics goes the complete opposite end of the spectrum and talks about how atoms or things even smaller, sub, I mean subatomic levels, how those kind of things work. We think of objects as having very well-defined positions. I can, you know, look at a, a grain of dust on a desk and say, that piece of dust is right there. Um, I know its position. I know its velocity. You know, if it's moving or not, I can measure them very easily. Um, and things are a lot different in quantum mechanics. Um, uh, basically, everything is governed by um, this quantum indeterminacy. You can never really know the exact position, the exact velocity, um, of an object, for example, um, an electron. I say an electron because it only um, really takes a noticeable effect on very small length scales, for example, on the order of the size of an atom. Of course, as you get smaller and smaller and smaller, things sort of get more and more difficult to probe. Um, this is why, you know, we haven't been able to uh, see inside of atomic nuclei until very recently, until we have these giant particle accelerators that can, um, uh, you know, get these particles really, really close together at extremely small length scales. So, mainly it just comes down to it, quantum mechanics is the physics of what, it, of the tiniest particles in our universe. Quantum mechanics and the standard model um, describe very well um, a universe with particles and forces, but without gravity. Gravity is somehow inconsistent with quantum mechanics. So there are the four fundamental forces of nature, electromagnetism, um, the strong and weak nuclear forces, and then also gravity. And gravity doesn't fit into quantum mechanics. String theory is kind of an attempt to join the two, quantum mechanics and general relativity, together uh, to unify what we understand of physics into one single theory. It in its basically where it gets its name from is that it says that matter is made up of vibrating strings on even smaller than imaginable scales and smaller than we could ever really probe or try to see that everything is made up of these vibrating strings and how they vibrate determines what kind of a particle it is or how it interacts with other things. Uh, sort of like guitar strings, for example. Um, you can make the guitar string um, vibrate in different ways um, by, you know, uh, pinching it at different points and plucking it, producing different notes. Um, in the same way, these different vibrational modes, these different sort of energies and methods of vibrating um, for these strings represent different particles. There's a lot of new and interesting stuff that uh, it involves as well. It, talks about things like instead of having three spatial dimensions in one time dimension, which Einstein kind of formulated in relativity, it expands that way more and its explanations say that there's 11 dimensions total, that you have one time dimension and 10 spatial dimensions, 
but we only have three that are on a large scale. The other seven are on such a small scale, they're just rolled up into each other, we don't experience them. Having so much physics background, I mean, I've been studying physics for now the last, I guess, seven years, I see it far more in the mathematical background, and there's these equations that you work out mathematically. I don't see it in necessarily an artistic or a dance way of it. So it'd be really interesting of how you could kind of try to express these things that I see as so much mathematical, and you just work out these equations that explain all this stuff, how you can express those through dance. I like the, I, I certainly like the idea of it. Um, I feel like to some extent, there's sort of this division between um, the math and science and art. Um, and people generally don't tend to cross that line a lot. Um, but I, I do feel like there is, to some extent, um, an art in science. Um, I don't see why there shouldn't be able to be science in art as well.